Radial with bias. Radial tire construction is substantially different from bias tire construction. The crossed plies of the bias tire run diagonally from bead to bead. In a radial tire, the carcass plies run in a radial direction from one bead to another. Radial tires also have stiff belts in the tread area that restrict growth and stabilize the lugs when they contact the ground. Radial tires have more supple sidewalls than bias tires that, in combination with the stiff belts, provide traction and efficiency superior to bias tires. Tubeless Tires Tubeless tires have been used for many years on combines and industrial tractors and have recently been adopted at all wheel positions by leading tractor manufacturers. They operate at the same inflation and have the same load capacity as equivalent tube type tires. Not only do tubeless tires provide higher reliability and easier puncture repair, but also lower assembly costs than tube type tires. When used with calcium chloride solution, rim corrosion is not a problem as long as you maintain the proper inflation pressure to keep the tire bead firmly on the rim's bead seat. This seals outside air away from the rim and controls corrosion. A dismounted rim will rust quickly if not rinsed with tap water immediately. Ply rating, star marking, load index. The load and pressure capacity of a tire is shown in the ply rating, for bias tires, the star marking, for conventional radial tires, or the load index, for metric radials. It can describe tire strength, as ply rating, rated inflation capacity, as star marking, or rated load capacity, as load index. Ply rating used by bias tires and some older radials. Ply rating is an indication of carcass strength and not the actual number of fabric plies in the tire. Maximum rated loads and pressures are different for each tire size with the larger tires operating at lower pressures for a given ply rating. Star marking used by conventional sized farm tractor radials. Star marking is an indication of rated inflation pressure, one star farm tractor tires are rated at 18 psi, two star farm tractor tires are rated at 24 psi, and three star farm tractor tires are rated at 30 psi. Loads vary with tire size. Load index used with metric radials. Load index is an indication of rated load with each load index number corresponding to a certain load. If two tires have the same load index, they will carry the same load, but not necessarily at the same inflation pressure. Rim Selection It is important to always mount a tire on a rim that is approved for it. Not only must the width be correct, but also the flange contour, i.e. DW, DD, F, L, must be the one recommended for the tire in question. Use of a rim wider than recommended. Using a wider rim results in flattening of the tread face. This effect may improve traction in some looser soil conditions. In hard soils, however, the flatter tread penetrates less effectively and tractive effort is reduced. Additional stresses concentrated in the shoulder area tend to increase the rate of shoulder tread wear. By spacing the tire beads farther apart, the sidewalls are forced to flex in an area lower than normal and this can result in circumferential carcass breaks and separation. Use of a rim narrower than recommended. This condition brings potential mounting problems because the rim shield or flange cover molded into most drive tire designs tends to interfere with the seating of the tire beads on a narrow rim. Once mounted on a narrow rim, the tire rim shield applies undue pressure on the rim flange with possible tire sidewall separation or premature rim failure at the heel radius. 
On a narrow rim the tread of the tire is rounded, as with the overinflated tire, tread wear will be concentrated in the center area of the tread and traction in the field will be reduced. Drive Tire Designs R1 is the most common type of lug tire used in the United States and Canada and is the tire to use for general dry land farming. R1W tires were introduced in Europe for the wet soils found there. They fill a gap between the R1 and R2 tires and provide the right tire for areas with wet, sticky soils. The W signifies wet soil service. R1W tires are defined as having 20% deeper tread depth than an equivalent R1 tire, but actually range from 15 to 35% deeper. R2 tires are for cane and rice and other crops grown in wet muck or flooded fields. R2 tires are about twice as deep as R1 tires. Although R2 tires are excellent in the service for which they are intended, the widely spaced lugs can cause problems with wear and vibration when rode. R2 tires also do not pull as well as R1 tires in the drier soils typical of crops such as corn and beans. R3 designs are used on turf or in sandy areas where the disturbance of an aggressive lug type tire is not wanted. R3 shallow, button style treads are not designed for hard pulling but may give surprisingly good traction on smooth, dry surfaces. R4 tires are found on tractors with backhoes or front-end loaders at construction and other industrial sites. These tires have shallow, durable lugs. HF1, HF2, HF3, and HF4 are types of a high flotation tire. In comparison with conventional tires, these tires have a wider cross section, a larger air volume, and operate at lower inflation pressures. The net result is a flotation effect for go anywhere performance despite terrain, despite load. The HF1 is a rib tread similar to an R3 tire. The HF2 type is a regular lug tread similar to an R1 tire. The HF3 type is a deep lug tread similar to an R1W tire. The HF4 is an extra deep lug tread similar to an R2 tire. Tread depth is the biggest factor affecting traction in wet soils, but as the soil dries out, deep lugs turn from assets to liabilities. In soil conditions most prevalent in North America, an R1 tire will pull better than an R1W. Flotation and Compaction Flotation is defined as the ability of a tire to resist sinkage into the soil. If a tire is not able to stay on top of the soil, it will leave a rut under which the soil texture is disturbed. It is a concern in loose, wet, or easily compacted soils. Agricultural soils need to have air and water filled pore spaces that allow root growth the transport of plant nutrients, and rapid absorption of rain water. Compaction is defined as a decrease in the volume of these pore spaces. There are two different concerns, first, subsoil compaction which is dependent on the total weight of the vehicle and, second, surface disturbance which is highly related to the average pressure between the tire and soil. For a given load, the tire that will carry the load at the lowest required inflation pressure will provide the greatest flotation and the least surface disturbance and compaction. This is because the average pressure under a tire is a little higher, about 1 to 2 psi for a radial and 2 to 3 psi for a bias, 
than the inflation pressure in the tire. It is important to remember that the gross flat plate contact areas for individual tires are correct only at that tire's rated inflation pressure and rated load. To compare the flotation characteristics of different size tires, use the load and inflation tables to determine the pressure corresponding to your load per tire. If you are looking for flotation, the tire that will carry the load at the lowest required inflation pressure is best. Singles, Duals, Triples Duals or triples can give you increased traction or increased flotation over single tires depending on how you set them up. If you want traction, add weight to your tractor up to the published load capacity for the tire using the appropriate row, single, dual, or triple, from the tables in the load and inflation section. Inflation pressure must be increased to match the load using the same table. Be careful not to exceed the manufacturer's maximum load rating for the axle. If you want flotation from your duals or triples, run your tractor at the manufacturer's minimum weight and HP ballasting recommendations and decrease inflation pressure to match the lighter load according to the load and inflation tables. Compared to single tires, duals and triples can allow you to both increase traction, more weight, and improve flotation, lower inflation pressure, if only moderate increases in ballasting are made. However, remember that duals and triples increase your tractor's rolling resistance and decrease traction efficiency. Dual Attachment Systems While rim-mounted duals are easier to take on and off, the spacer band between the two rims decreases ground clearance. Axle mounted duals are more flexible because they allow you to change spacing. Axle mounted duals are also better at transmitting high torque. Liquid and air fill with duals A few years ago the recommendation was to put liquid only in the inner tire but new information has changed the guidelines. All tires on an axle should be filled to the same level which should not exceed 40%, for a clock valve stem position. Likewise, all tires on a given axle should be inflated to the same pressure. Tire Overload or Underinflation Overloading and underinflating a tire both have the effect of overdeflecting it. Under these conditions the tread on the tire will wear rapidly and unevenly, particularly in the shoulder area. Radial cracking in the upper side wall area will be a problem. With underinflated bias drive tires in high torque applications, Sidewall buckles will develop leading to carcass breaks in the sidewall. While an underinflated drive tire may pull better in some soil conditions, this is not generally true and not worth the high risk of tire damage incurred. Tire Overinflation Overinflation results in an underdeflected tire carcass. The tread is more rounded and wear is concentrated at the center. Traction is reduced in high torque service because both width and length of the ground contact area are reduced. The harder carcass with reduced flexing characteristics does not work as efficiently. Moreover, 
the tightly stretched overinflated carcass is more subject to weather checking and impact breaks. Rim Slippage In attempting to obtain maximum tractor drawbar pull, tube valves are occasionally torn off because of slippage of the tire bead on the rim. Tubeless tires, although immune to pulled valves due to slippage, may still suffer abrasion on the base of the bead after prolonged operation with the tire slipping on the rim. Tire slippage on the rim may be caused by Low inflation pressure for load Improper seating of tire bead on rim Use of thick soap solution or improper mounting lubricant in mounting the tire beads to the rim Inadequate tire size or strength rating for the high torque requirements. Undersize rim, consult manufacturer for specialized equipment needed to determine if rims are out of spec. Poor rim knurling on bead seat.